Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind. Remember, we're a podcast to make you stop and think about your leadership journey by speaking to amazing guests with amazing stories and experts in their field. So if you haven't already and you're watching us on the YouTube channel, make sure you hit subscribe. If you're listening to us on your podcast provider, make sure you hit follow and please pass any episodes on that you find really interesting and intriguing. So hopefully this will be one of them. So today we are speaking to Philip. How are you doing, sir? Very well. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good. Well, I've been looking forward to this one. Um, I've been working alongside for, for um, the start of this year on a, on a project. And we spent many a time having a, a pint, a drink. And we actually spent three hours in a car together going from Newcastle to London, didn't we? <laughs> with, with Mark Hunter, who's also been on the podcast. Um, mm. And just a person to have great conversations with. Um so it's been great to have you on. So thank you for coming on. So without further ado, let, let's get going. So as I hit the 20-minute timer, um, for the people who don't know who you are, could you introduce yourself and tell us who you are, where you are, and then what you do? Sure. Yeah. So Philip, um, right now in Barcelona. Uh, so I spend time in between Barcelona and London. And um, what I do is, is very similar to what you do, Stuart. Um, so coaching, uh, leadership development in in different organizations in different contexts uh, i guess the only difference between um, you and me in that uh, context is that i do it in different languages so I, I i work in french german english spanish and swiss yeah if that counts as a language <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that gets me around a lot so um yeah travel a lot and that is what I enjoy doing, you know, like meeting people, connecting with people, and um, it's always been my dream to 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 do what I do now, um, because it it encompasses so many of my values and what I'm interested in, and learning about different things, different organizations, different people, and and doing that in a in a in a, in a different cultural context depending on on the the piece of work so yeah yeah that's amazing and we're going to dig into that as well because i'm interested mm -hmm. in hearing the differences that you see as well culturally and languages etc and i'm very um got a lot of admiration for people that have got different languages i think it's an amazing skill to have so um before we forget let's start the question so we're obviously hashtag leadership what's on your mind what what comes to your mind when you hear the word leadership well, in essence, for me, the, the most simple definition of, of leadership is how you're being and what you're doing, you know, and um, that's really what comes to mind when I hear the word leadership and when I talk to people about leadership, you know, because leadership can be described in so many different ways and it can be quite theoretical, but when you think about it, it's how you show up. It's how you're being in certain situations, how you respond to circumstances that you might not like, uh, uh, how, how you treat others, um, how you're being and what you're doing. And, and there's a lot to that. There's a lot to yeah. that because I, I think, you know, the more transactional aspect of leadership, which is tool-based, information-based, um, behavioral, uh, that's a pretty small aspect um, in comparison to, to the being aspect, you know, like how, how you do things is, is, is so much more nuanced. And we we're, we're talking about business just before we started recording, right? Like, yeah. uh, or just any journey in life and how, um, you know, where you want to be is somewhere yeah. up here. And then you reach that and then there's always further to go. And in the being, in, in how you're being, how you do things, how you um, show up on a day-to-day -day basis, how you treat other people, how you lead people, how you lead yourself, how you're being with uncertainty, how courageous you are being. And there's always room to improve, right? Like, so there's, yeah. there's, there's never a finish line where yeah. you now mastered your being, you know? Like, I don't think that, that anyone ever, ever gets that. And that's the, the fascinating thing of, of, of working with leadership and working on yourself on these things and, and yeah. working with others on that because it's it's just infinite it's just infinite um what you uh, can can get better at yeah in, and again it just makes me realize that when how you said that how you started on the face of it, it's very simplistic yeah but then on the other side it's also very complex 
very, very complex and infinite, like you said. Um, excellent. So staying with you personally, um, we asked people where they think their leadership, the, your personal leadership journey started. So is it on reflection or was there a light bulb moment at the time that you were conscious about? Um, where, where, How far back are we going for you? Where do you think your leadership journey started? Hmm. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good question in, in that I don't really have a, a clear answer because is it a leadership journey or is it a journey of, you know, because the thing with, with, with uh, explaining your story, you know, is always that you can make sense of it looking back. Obviously, as I was living it, um, it I, I didn't make sense of it uh, and I didn't sort of thought of it as leadership or as um, anything, all these things that I've experienced uh, having a certain impact and that having me to make choices, et cetera, right? Like, so yeah. um, it's, it's it, it, I'm just gonna, you know, I guess give, give this, the answer a bit of a different spin. Yeah, and, you, know, and, uh, you know, there, there's, there's been, definitely like moments you know where you're inspired by a certain person by a certain event by doing something and then um that giving you a certain insight and you then trying to return to what you've been doing before um and that simply not matching up and, and that's kind of like what happened to me so as you know I trained as a uh, a lawyer originally um so for all the wrong reasons you know like I was wasn't very good at school um at first so I'm, I'm dyslexic um and um had problems reading writing so that that uh wasn't something that I was naturally good at and um, I found I guess the drive to succeed at school through through football. So I played football at a relatively competitive level, and I had a, a coach that really believed in me. So that you could already say that that has a lot to do with leadership. So that was someone there that saw more potential in me than I saw in myself at the time. You know, I had two yeah. left feet, and you know, couldn't couldn't dribble, <laughs> couldn't juggle, couldn't, and 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 he was like, no, no, but like this kid, if we teach him, he can learn, and I learned from him and he gave me opportunities in big games first you know as a sub and brought me on scored goals that raised confidence that got me to play at a pretty high level and and then you know there was an insight you know like if you put work into something you can get results right like and I transferred that into school and and I put that into law school because I've I am still quite competitive. I was extremely competitive. So I just wanted to be better than everyone. So, I, and, and what, a, what a better field, you know, to, to do that than law, right? Like where you can just um, study uh, as, you know, and also kind of infinitely. So yeah, I did that. Um, and, and a light bulb moment after that was, you know, I, 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 I always felt like there was more to work, more to life than, you know, I, I worked in investment banking, had the corner office at a, at, a, at a very early stage in my career, climbed the ladder and, you know, everyone was applauding from the sidelines and, you know, you're making 100K and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, and people um, tell you that that's really impressive and successful um, and you inside, you know, for me, it was like, you know, sitting by myself, by myself at the kitchen table, looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, are you really successful? And I, I sort of felt not really, you know, that, that had me quit my job when traveling around the world. Another one of these insights occurred when I met this person, and I think I mentioned this to you, um, I was teaching Spanish at a, I know actually English, I learned Spanish through teaching uh, through teaching English at a children's orphanage in Colombia, and this guy that founded the orphanage, he was uh, he was blind himself, um, and he had um, uh, adopted eight children himself, and he, he created this home for ninety children, and and it was just amazing, you know, like to see what he had created and how how many lives he's changed to his through his courage and through his generosity, and um, I. I I then ended up teaching there and that was a, a sort of an insightful moment that I would have never anticipated, you know, like I would have never thought that that would impact me so, so, so much 
because after that I was like I had the felt experience of how work can feel when it gives you more energy than you put into it so you know going into work coming back with more energy and I, I, I set me up on this quest to to find what that was for me you know um so a bit of a um, uh, no I love that because you've already covered my set my third question so we're not going to go there with regards to impact mm. moments along I think you covered a couple there and mm. that's really good because I wanted to share that with the audience about where you've what your journey of twists and turns because I think that's really meaningful and again definitely resonates with me because again simplifying it like love what you do and what what is success for you and, and I love the way the fact that you said about people cheering and clapping along the way that sort of externally validating that that what that's what looks success looks like and and internally you can be having and, and how often do you hear that and not a lot of people do anything about it either which is which is the the scary part really yeah, yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> so tell me a little bit about and um, there's a couple of things that i want to tell you ask you about so let's go different cultures different languages obviously you have and it really interests me i've probably not asked you personally when we've spent time together this enough so it's really nice that we're able to do this on the podcast what are the differences what are the um things that you see show up in between the different countries that you're able to um deliver in um obviously i only get to see the uk i've done a little bit of delivery online globally but not to the extent of you being in the room or or bringing board members of different countries, larger organizations together and facilitating that sort of training? What sort of things come out of as, as challenges, but also what are people doing really well that are different to everybody else? Hmm. Well, you know, this, this could be a long conversation, right? Like, uh, because there's, there's a lot to it, right? Like, and, We've got nine minutes left, just let you know. <laughs> and mm, it, there, there's lots of nuance right like between because you have corporate culture you have organizational culture then you have national culture and then you have individuals who are just all different right like so um if i would have to identify some patterns right like so what would for example i do quite a lot of work in germany and the germanic re region and what uh what, what's quite different between that region and uh maybe the uk is that people are very direct, direct very honest um uh, in conversations, especially like I've been doing some work with a with a board of, of a large company there, uh, and I've I've, I've also uh, led a big merger of a, of a big Anglo-Saxon telco company, and that uh, that had purchased a, a big telco provider in, in in Germany, and and doing a lot of alignment work, and and what came up there often was this difference, this big difference in 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 addressing things head on, you know, like a very Germanic trait. And and that can be very useful, very, very um, productive because you get straight to the point. And on the other hand, it can sometimes be unnecessarily, you know, create sort of a conflict, an, an attitude of, or, or an atmosphere of, of conflict um, where it's not necessary, you know? And I, I then often facilitate that around, you know, just, notice that and, and have people realize that and then explore alternatives you know like so for example uh, if you have a thought where you have a nuanced different vision you know view you say yes and you know instead of i completely disagree with that that's 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 nonsense you know we, we have to do it like that and you could just say well yes it's a good point and what i would add is this and this and that because in 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 the actual fact you know um, it's fairly similar. It's just that the cultures are often um, different and, and what's acceptable in one culture or what will be normal in one culture won't be. And, and then it's about like, yeah, and that, that would be an example. If you have an awareness of that, you can use that to bring it to the awareness of the system that you're working with, which yeah, could be yeah. a group of people, and then they can choose to engage with that differently. But there's no- I like that, yeah, because as you were talking then, you covered, what I was almost thinking, but I was thinking that there's no right or wrong. There's just awareness. Yeah. And then if you've got awareness, you're able to then choose to interact in an appropriate, positive way to get a solution. Because I can imagine there can be quite a lot of conflict, friction, 
like to, to facilitate like you said that that's one of your roles um fantastic i like that yeah big time so i think like you know awareness in in in, in anything in leadership development is the most essential thing right like so yeah. you know for, it's a bit like the, the the you know the steps that we we're talking about earlier like you know to get there to get to the next level it, it's it's not about more tools it's not about more information it's not about you know more contacts um it, it's about more awareness because more awareness gives you the choice to engage differently in different situations and and yeah. and culturally there's a lot of awareness that you ought to gain and and you know speaking other languages um, is an access to that like that you that, that i would encourage anyone you know who, who wants to invest the time to do that and um, is an enabler of that you know yeah. like that you can just get so much more awareness of the nuances of a different culture that will give you more choice to adapt in different yeah yeah so we've got five minutes left <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you this question because i love your perspective on this i know you've gone on a personal journey on this um only this morning with a client online coaching um agree we were talking one of their values is to be 100 percent in the room present and mm -hmm. um, they aim for that and i know that we've spoken about um the phone notifications emails and I know you've gone through a journey about this and I, and I listen to your story and think I, I need to do better. Um, I have done and I've reverted back, et cetera. But it's a big thing that people talk about, about and it links to what we've talked about for the whole 15 minutes so far about being present. Um, there are challenges nowadays with technology and the, the access to everything that we need straight away. Um, but just the audience will be in exactly the same notification. I just love for you to share for the last four minutes your sort of take on that and how you've improved over time. Mm, yeah, mm, I think it's it's sort of a, a holistic thing, right? Like that goes hand in hand with a lot of things. So, so what do I do um, that really helped me and, and had measurable difference? Um, to my attention and my presence, really, like, and my clarity of thought, right? Like, I, I guess if, if you want a why for that, like, you know, why would you engage less with technology? I think you need to know why. Um, and for me, it's clearly about getting more out of life, being more here every day in every single conversation that I have, in every, every coffee that I drink, or, you know, every glass of water that I have, that I actually am here present doing that act because when you think about it when you slow down and when you're in the moment small things as ordinary as as taking a sip of water are extraordinary you know and and i guess life is made up of of many extraordinary moments if you uh, can be present with them you know mm -hmm. mm. so yeah i've stopped reading the news for example that's one thing you know i call this selective ignorance and um now people think well that's irresponsible you, you don't know what's going on if you don't read the news and it's actually not true like you know because if you like yourself and myself like we're, we're talking to people every day um so you get the, the 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 latest events you can ask people um and you still are informed um push notifications on the phone um, don't have any of those you know like so so nothing can come in unless i decide to engage with it like so if, you, if i show you my phone right now there would be no you know i, I don't know even what color they are like red um yeah, alert. So i was talking about that the red were, were and again the reason why they're actually designed to pull out attention yeah. and it's the the blue dots the blue the 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 auditory and the visual is designed in in, a, in in society now that that drives our attention doesn't it and i think it's a great thing not to have that and to, to choose to observe your emails to choose to check social media to choose to check websites obviously in the business i i have to do that on a regular basis but sometimes i'm drawn to it of course I'm not like, chosen to do it it's so often that you just pick up the phone and you you habitually like you know 
check and then you're kind of like what was i going to do so what really helped me with that is is deleting all social media apps so i don't have these on my phone anymore right like so before that that's your go-to right like you open your phone you haven't had a clear idea why you want to open your phone and um, that's where you go scroll through instagram right and, and i believe um strongly that you know in a couple of years um not too far from now uh, we will talk about scrolling and and technology the way we talk about smoking today you know you you do it everywhere you, d- you used to do it everywhere like smoke in an office smoke you know yeah. uh, in restaurants and um it was the most normal thing and now we we look at this and we go like how could we be so ignorant you know yeah. and and I think the same well, it, it's funny you mention oh. that because as you know I've got four young children with the eldest just going off to high school mm-hmm. and we have this conversation all the time about the effect it has and again there's transferable links over from us as, as a family being aware of it to then you as a business owner a director a, a member of a team being aware of it and the damage it can have and and we've had similar conversations that we're we're in the belief whether it's belief or hope that it will have that sort of effect of it will i think it will change i think acceptance of it will change as well but i think it might have to heighten a little bit more before then we go wait a minute like what we're not being present we're not being productive it's not serving us Uh, which again it's a big line between being really holistic Mm -hmm. and just being really productive and looking after people and and we all know the clarity that it gives us if we do have that little bit of time. We had a couple of people on the podcast that have had technology breaks and, yeah. and always spoken about how what good it is for them. Yeah, 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 for sure. So yeah, also, yeah. and then the, maybe the, the the last two hacks or things that I do that 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 I think can really help um, is is you know meditation, obviously, like you know every day, every morning. And then journaling, you know, having some sort of structure. I use the five minute journal, um, yeah. don't have any shares, don't, you know, don't promote me because of that, but I think it's a good structure. Sort of like proning gratitude, proning, uh, what do you want to do? And for the first uh, hour, hour and a half in the morning, I don't check my phone, I have it on flight mode, you know, like, so it, during the morning routine, during the meditation, journaling, there's no interruption or no looking even at the emails, which already could get your mind into a certain direction. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that is a perfect way of finishing the podcast. I'm, I'm conscious of when I send you an email now in the future, but it's not in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Philip, thank you so much for your time. Um, ladies and gents, if you've enjoyed that, make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. Make sure you follow us on your podcast provider. And as ever, I always love hearing the takeaways from each episode. Um, quite a few people now reach out and, and share them. It's a bit of a habit that they have now, and it's great to hear people listening. And, and everybody's different, a bit like the um, hashtag leadership, what's on your mind. Everybody brings a unique perspective on their, on their, what leadership means for them. So, Philip, thank you so much again. Thank you, Stuart. Yeah, and we'll see you all next week, 6 a.m. every Wednesday. Another fantastic guest coming your way. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you.